Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome to this one. It's my third or fourth time doing this one for my intro for a variety of reasons. Uh, the main reason right now is that uh, the last one I did was kind of scratchy. So I'm going to redo it and hopefully do it even better than the last time. So if you haven't been involved with FTC SIM, um, what you have to do to get to the landing screen that I'm on right now is go to ftcsim.org slash ftcsim. If you were involved before, we've now gone from um, a different site to our own domain. So hopefully that uh, is not going to cause you a problem. When you get to the landing page, you're going to see that some of these things are locked. And that's because you have to have an account. So <clears throat> if you have an account, you can log right in. And to do that, I'm going to go up here to the, this little hamburger menu. And you can see it says here to log in. And mine is already set to go. But what I would tell you is that it's free. You can sign up as an individual if you're a teacher. And this is the one I've created for a teacher account. If you're a teacher, you can sign up as a teacher. And you can have both accounts if, you're, if you want. And the teacher account will allow you to do uh, things like sign up your students and give them passwords and logins so they don't have to use their email. And so that um, is going to protect their privacy from that. But there's lots of other things that you can do when you sign up as a teacher. And there's a separate video on that that shows you how to do it. So without any further ado, if you've paused and created your account or if you already have an account and you're ready to go, we're going to log in. Once we log in, we, we get back here to this uh, landing screen. But you can see now that these uh, FTC SIM sensors, puzzles, and Grabby no longer have a lock on them. So they're now available to you. And again, just a reminder that they're free. Uh, we're going to actually go to, um, just in case you're doing this as a teacher, you'll see now that it says My School. If you don't see My School here, then what's happened is you've signed in, you've logged in, you've created a login any of those with um, an account that doesn't involve you being a teacher. So that's an individual account. So if you're lost and you're not on this screen, if you're on some other screen, you can go to this menu and choose FTC SIM and it will get you here. So we're going to go down here to FTC movement. And there's about 10 puzzles or challenges um, that you see in each one of FTC movement, sensors, puzzles, and grabby. And because this is an intro, we're going to start with the very first one, just to give you an idea about how this works. <clears throat> so when you do go to the intro, you'll see uh, first thing pops up is a video. That, it's a video created by me in most cases, I think. But once you click that off, you will see uh, a couple of screens. So the main one here has a robot on the typical 12 by 12 foot field that FTC First Tech Challenge robots run on. It's a basic robot um, that uh, has the control, control hub on it that you see. It's got a motor down here and a motor down here. You can't see it, but there's a distance sensor that's pointing towards the end of the field here. And there's a color sensor that's pointing to the floor. And later on in other tutorials, you're going to learn how to use those as well. The concept of all of these ones is to take your robot from where it is and get it to drive and stop at the flag a certain distance away and that a little bit of trial and error there but that's how they all work except in some cases <coughs> excuse me there are some things in the way as you're going to see and you can use different ways to do it i'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see this template or framework that appears um, in the coding area so you would drop in you would drag and drop code blocks of code in here to add to the template ones that are here. Just to show you, if I run these blocks, uh, nothing is going to happen because there's nothing to do. Like there's no code in there. This is just a setup code. And some of the code here is just information for us. So anything that's blue here is a remark or a comment, and that's just intended for the user. The computer just ignores that. And then over here on the far left is where we have all the blocks that we use. So we have blocks that relate directly to our FTC robot. 
Uh, but we also have blocks that relate to coding in general that you would see in any coding program like logic and loops and some math, creating variables and some other miscellaneous things like putting in comments, for example. So we're going to get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to turn the motors on so they're going to propel the robot towards there. So you, if you didn't know this, if the motors are not turned on, nothing happens. So we're going to fix that. So those are under the actuator um, drop down. So motors and actuator, and there's uh, another one, DC motor, and there's a whole bunch of things in there. We're actually going to go one more drop down to choose dual because we want to turn both motors on at exactly the same time. It also helps that that's the only block in here, so it makes it easier when you're teaching a group of students that that's the one you got to choose. So we're going to drag it in, and where it says put run blocks here, we're going to do that. Now, typically when I do this, uh, and I was a computer teacher for many years, I want to do it in little bits and pieces, and not always from the very top down. So I'm going to start here in the middle, because I am going to put something above this. And then we'll see what happens, and then try to explain that. So when we click on run, a robot spins around. And the reason why it spins around is because both the motors are turning one. So that's the maximum value that you can have in here. You could have negative one, the maximum value that would make it go the motor spin backwards, but this is the maximum value that makes it spin for 100% of its power. You could have zero, which means it's not going to get any power, which would stop a motor if it had powder, power, or like a 0.5 or negative 0.5 or some numbers in between there. Our problem is because the motors, one is facing to the right and one is facing to the left, they're actually, the left one is flipped and we need to t change it so that it works just like the right one. And when we give it a value of one, it's going to go forward. So up in the actuators, again, this time in DC motor, we're going to see one of them, the third one down, it says set the motor left direction to forward. So we're going to drag that one in and set it in the initialization <coughs> area. And what we want to do is set it to reverse. So the motor left is going to reverse from what it's normally doing. And <coughs> that would then make it go forward because it's in um, it's been flipped over from the right one. Anyways, now what we will see is that when we run it, it goes forward, but unfortunately it doesn't stop. You can see it's sort of shimmying to the left. And if a real robot was doing that, <coughs> excuse me, the motor might eventually burn out. So we need to get it to stop. Well, we've already said that using dual and putting in the value of zero would cause that to stop. So we'll put cause that motor to stop. So we'll put them in and we'll test it out. So this dual block gives the motors full power. This one shuts them off. Unfortunately, it does that so fast because computers are very fast <clears throat> that it doesn't do it doesn't move anything. So we have to find a way to let this command run for a little bit longer before it goes to the one that shuts it off. And the way we do that is in linear op mode, there's a sleep block. And the sleep block is like a block that's in many programming languages. There's wait, there's delay. In Blockly, they're calling it sleep. So it doesn't cause the program to sleep. All it's doing is it's causing it, when it gets to this block, it stays on this block for a thousand milliseconds, which as we all know is a, a millisecond, one millisecond, oh, one second, I should say. <clears throat> so here we go, let's test it out and see what happens. So it moves and then it stops and it moves for 1000 milliseconds, but 1000 milliseconds doesn't get us to the flag. So there's a little bit of trial and error here. I know that when I click on it, 1500 will actually get me there. So let's try it out and test it again. And we go and it stops. Now it could be a little bit less than that. It could be more than that. Part of that is the, the nature of robotics where, you know, there's a, <coughs> a, a sensor that figures out how close we are to that in the program and it's using that to decide what to do. Now we haven't used this repeat block with this loop so we could take it out. We could also leave it in. The one thing we do want to make sure we do is we want to make sure that we save it. So we're going to save it right there. <clears throat> in later episodes we'll talk about doing this very same uh, task, this very same puzzle using different ways. We might use encoders 
which are built into the motors in this uh, in this particular kind of motor for FTC robots, or the distance sensor that's on the front to try to get us there. And there's lots of ways to do it. And we'll also later on talk about the other tab that's here on Bot Java. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope uh, uh, you're going to try this FTC sim out. I hope you're going to try it with your friends. If you're a teacher, I hope you have uh, a great time with your class. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. And thanks for joining us.